You know, the head design of a football jig is really transcending in the sport into, into the fact, with the exception of flipping, it's probably the most used jig in any application in our sport of bass fishing for both smallmouth, largemouth, and even spotted bass. But if you think about the shape, of a football jig, you know, and you, you roll a football, you know, along the ground and it bounces all over the place because of its ob oblong shape. And that's what happens when you're bringing that jig around, you get a lot more different movements with it. And, and that's really going to create that unique action and make those bass bite. But even, even from the standpoint of it being wider, elongated, that's going to allow it to not find more crevices within these rocks. You know, if you're using a narrow jig, you're going to stay hung up. Now this swamper jig has a lot of crawl bars cut in it. It really mimics the exoskeleton of a crayfish. And anytime you can get a real natural approach, it's really gonna make for a better application. I've worked with underwater cameras before where watching in the Great Lakes of smallmouth bass will go down and they'll look at a lure and they'll back up and go down and look at it with their other eye and, and really study a lure. You'd be surprised at how many times a bass is looking at your lure and you're not getting bit. But a football jig is so versatile. So many different applications, whether it's brush piles, uh, rock banks like what we're fishing here, and man, they just flat out catch them. A cool technique I like on runoffs or situations like this, or really rocky banks in general, is a finesse style football jig. You know, Years ago, the only time I would throw a football jig is when I was out offshore fishing really deep. And now, you know, I really like a football jig that's lightweight. This is actually a 5 16 ounce Swampers football jig. You know, I got it paired with a clone crossum. But the thing about it is, the, the cool thing, the reason we all fish football jigs is how it fishes so well around rocks. The way that head is designed with that wide shape, it really allows you to make those casts and get in and around those rocks without getting hung up. You know, basically what I do, you know, when I make that cast out there, you know, I'll land, you know, a foot or two within the bank and just keep that rod tip high, you know, and hopping it through those rocks. And that's when you get those strikes and sometimes you really get some jarring strikes with a football jig. They see it as a fleeing crayfish and we know how fast a crayfish can be and get back down in the rocks so the bass really get after them really fast. What I do, you know, when I make that cast out there, you know, you're, you're hopping three or four feet and, and you can pretty much tell by the contour of the bank what you're fishing, you know, and this is going to continue on out into the water. We're sitting here in 11 foot and where I'm seeing the bay fish, where right now is four to eight feet, you know, that's the distance that I'm going to come back and then once I get it out past that depth, I'm just going to reel in and make another cast. But pretty much that hopping that you're doing, which you're giving the movement to that lure, is bringing it up and in and around and through those rocks. And then as it falls, I like to let it fall on a slack line. You know, and a lot of times when I pick it up, that's when I notice that fish is there. So I slowly put a little bit of resistance on it. If I don't feel a fish there, then I'll hop it a couple of more times. And that brings the bait forward two to three feet each time. So get out, you know, fish it around rocks, fish it around the bank, just like going down the bank like a casting jig with a finesse technique. Man, it's just a great application for not only catching numbers, but really good size fish also.